the painted wall. A Jiangxi gentleman named Meng Longtan was lodging at the capital with a Mr. Zhu. When one day chance led them to a certain temple, within which they found no spacious halls or rooms, but only an old Buddhist monk in it. On observing the visitors, he arranged his dress and went forward to meet them, leading them around and showing wherever there was to be seen. In the temple, they saw a statue of Bao Zhi, a smart Buddhist monk, and the walls on either side were beautifully painted with lifelike representations of people and animals. On the east side were pictured a number of fairies, among whom was a young girl with long hair. She was picking flowers and gently smiling. With her cherry leaves seemed about to move, and the moisture of her eyes to overflow. Mr. Zhu gazed for a long time without taking his eyes off her, until at last he became unconscious of anything but the thoughts that were engrossing him. Then suddenly he felt himself floating in the air. As if riding on a cloud, and found himself flow to the wall. He saw there halls and pavilions stretched away one after another, unlike the abodes of mortals. Here, an old Buddhist monk was preaching the law of Buddha, surrounded by a large crowd of listeners. Mr. Zhu mingled with the throng. And after a few moments, perceived a gentle tug at his sleeve. Turning around, he saw the young girl above mentioned, who smiled gently and walked away. Mr. Zhu at once followed her, and passing a winding gallery, arrived at a small apartment, beyond which he dared not venture further. But the young girl, looking back, Waved the flowers she had in her hand, as though beckoning him to come on. He accordingly entered and found nobody else within. Then, with no delay, he embraced her, and finding her to be far from unreceptive, proceeded to make love with her. After which, the lady went away. Bidding Mr. Zhu keep quiet until she came back. This went on for a couple of days, when the young lady's companions began to smile a red, and discovered Mr. Zhu's hiding place. Thereupon, they all laughed and said, "My dear, you are now a married woman, and should live off that maidenly confusion." So, they. Gave her the proper hairpins and head ornaments, and bade her go bind her hair. At which she blushed very much, but said nothing. Then, one of them cried out, "My sisters, let's be off. Two's company, more's none." At this, they all giggled again and went away. Mr. Zhu found his wife very much improved by the alteration in the style of her hair. The high top knot and the hairpins of pendants were very becoming to her. They were alone again and soon fell to further spots of love. His senses suffused with the heady perfume that. Emanated from her body, a scent of orchid mingled with musk. But suddenly, they heard a sound like a trampling of heavy sword boots, accompanied by the clanking of chains and the noise of angry discussion.
the girl jump up in a fright, and she and Mr. Chu peeped out. They saw a man clad in golden armor, with face as black as jet, carrying in his hands chains and whips, and surrounded by all the girls. He asked, "Are you all here?" "Oh," they replied. The man then made a movement as if he would search the place, upon which the bride was dreadfully alarmed, and her face turned the color of ashes. In her terror, she said to Mister Zhu, "Hide yourself under the bed, and open a small lattice in the wall." Disappeared herself. If, said he, any mortal is here concealed amongst you, denounce him at once, and lay not up sorrow for yourself. Here they all answered as before that there was no one. Mister Zhu, in his concealment, hardly dared to draw his breath, and in a little while. He heard the boots tramp into the room, and out again. The sound of the voice getting gradually fainter and fainter in the distance. This reassured him, but he still heard the voice of people going backwards and forwards outside. And having been a long time in a cramped position. His eyes began to sing as if there was a locust in them, and his eyes to burn like fire. It was almost unbearable. However, he remained quietly awaiting the return of the young lady, without giving a thought to the why and wherefore of his present position. Meanwhile, Meng Longtan had noticed the sudden disappearance of his friend, and thinking something was wrong, asked the Buddhist monk where he was. He has gone to hear the preaching of the law, replied the monk. Where? said Mr. Meng. Oh, not very far, was the answer. Then, with his finger. The old monk tapped the wall and called out, "Friend Chu, what makes you play for so long?" At this, the likeness of Mister Chu was figured upon the wall, with his ear inclined in the attitude of once listening. The monk added, "Your friend here has been waiting for you some time." And immediately, Mr. Zhu descended from the wall, standing transfixed like a block of wood, with starting eyeballs and trembling legs. Mr. Meng was much terrified, and asked him quietly what was the matter. Now the matter was that, while concealed under the bed. Mr. Zhu had heard a noise resembling thunder, and had walked out to see what it was. Here, they all noticed that the young lady on the wall, with the maiden's dress, had changed the style of her coiffure to that of a married woman. Mr. Zhu was greatly astonished at this. And asked the old monk the reason. He replied, "The source of illusion lies within man himself. What explanation can I give?" Mister Zhu was chest tightness with poor breathing. This answer was very astonished to Mister Meng, who was rather frightened. So, they farewell to the monk. 
descended the temple steps and went away. You may be confused that was the difference in coiffure between maiden and a woman. I will briefly introduce it in a timeline of a people. This coiffure named Shuang Ya Ji. Shuang means double. Ya means the young girls. Ji means the bun. So this name means the young girl with double bun coiffure. Usually seen in some very young girls. This coiffure named Bai Hua Fen Xiao Ji. Bai Hua means hundreds of flowers. Fen Xiao means spilled branches. Ji means the bun. So this name means hundred flowers with spilled branches. When a young girl with this coiffure, she is usually considered as a maiden. This coiffure named Jing Guo. Jing means tower. Guo means wrap up. So this name means wrap up the hair with tower. Widely seen in ordinary families. With time went by, Jing Guo becomes the pronoun of outstanding females in China. There are dozens of other coiffure. If you are interested in the other coiffure in history, which also includes some kind of coiffures for men too, write down your comment under this video. If the number of the people who want to know exceed 20, I will make a video briefly introduce the coiffure chains in a timeline of history. This is the first time to make video for this channel. If you are interested in strange stories from a Chinese studio, click the subscribe. This is the courage to continue for me. Have a nice day and see you next time.